Imagine a time travel movie that leaves you with more questions than answers. For some, it's the ultimate sci-fi mystery. For others, well, it's a bit of a letdown. Welcome or welcome back to The Stories Eater. Today's video will be slightly different from the other ones that are cinema related on this channel. Lately, I've been watching several TV shows and movies that left me with either questions or points that I want to discuss with someone else, but couldn't really find many reviews on, or I disagreed with those and I wanted to talk about these and see what's your point of view. And this is why today we will talk about things will be different. There will be a spoiler-free section and I will tell you when spoilers will start. This is a hidden gem because it's a low-budget sci-fi mystery thriller that was released in 2024. Let me give you a plot summary and then we will get into a spoilery discussion. After a robbery, strange siblings Joseph and Sydney reunite with $7 million in cash and hide out in a remote farmhouse which holds the ability to transport occupants into an alternate timeline if they follow instructions in a notebook. Overall observations, without spoilers, this film was shot mainly in one location with two main characters, so we spend most of the movie with them, and for that reason perhaps the movie is slow. I watched a review saying that it's patient, but I disagree because I was not satisfied with the pace of the movie, because it switched after the first 20 minutes or so, in which I felt intrigued, I was drawn into the story right away, especially because at the very beginning you're not given any real explanation about what's going on so yes you get that they need to escape somewhere and i was thrilled when i saw that they used clocks as part of the device that allowed them to move to somewhere else or rather in some other time all right now we're diving into spoiler territory so if you haven't seen things will be different yet this is your last chance to pause, watch it and come back later. So here's a twist. As Joe, the male protagonist in this story, one of the two siblings, as Joe continues, it becomes clear that his story is anything but straightforward. I mean, is he actually jumping through time or is there something much bigger and maybe darker unfolding? As Joe and Sid open the door, in this farmhouse, the tension builds, and as soon as they are on the other side, so in a different timeline, or perhaps out of time entirely, they set up the clocks again and they are safe for some time. So they just tell us, the viewers, that they need to leave time past in their own timelines, in their present, and that's why they will spend the first two weeks just enjoying the time that they have, this house is filled with whatever they might need, it's filled with food as well, and basically there's this montage in which they enjoy their time. But then things go sideways, so until that point I would say the pace was right. And then I was hoping that it would keep that pace, so that maybe you would move to a different timeline again, or to a different location, you know, that something would happen that would keep the stakes high. And instead, the movie slows down at that point, because yes, there's a big shift. So in that moment, when those two weeks have passed, and they are supposed to go back to their timeline and use the same devices again, something has happened, something has changed, so that they cannot go. And they communicate with this interesting method of recording questions and answers on tape and basically getting the answers live because the ones who are answering or asking questions are i think they're called the right and the left side and they don't belong to time per se or at least this is what I think, and that's why it doesn't really matter. So it turns out that the two protagonists were not meant to be there in that location, 
because the person who gave them the notebook and all the possible tools to do that wasn't truly the owner of the house or something like that so that at that point after those two weeks the people on the other side of this tape told them that they were supposed to be wiped and so they made an agreement to escape death basically and they accepted to stay there and wait for an intruder who these people wanted to know more about and wanted to stop them so they wanted this intruder dead but they had no clue who this person was and why was that person doing that and so they agreed on that and then time passes and passes and they go nuts because they spend a whole year waiting for this intruder since the people on the other side had no clue when the intruder was supposed to arrive. So as they spend time in this house, we get to know the two protagonists a little, but we still don't get all the answers, such as like a minor question that I might have is, what did Joe do to disappoint his sister so much so that they got estranged? So there are a couple of flashbacks, but it's just hinted, I mean, was it really a severe reason or is that in any way connected to what we are experiencing during the movie? Not really, I mean, yeah, I don't think it was. And another minor question, we see this farmhouse and then there is a mill and around the farmhouse there is a line of blood on the ground and it's not clear if that is due to them trying to escape multiple times and since their bodies are not meant to be in that place or out of their time one of the reactions is spitting or vomiting blood and we see that only once with the sister but that detail is never explained or it doesn't really matter in the plot for some reason but i don't know i want to know what was that and then I have a couple of bigger questions that I actually wish we would get answers to. Towards the end, there is this moment in which Joe speaks directly to the left and right side. So those two people supposedly out of time and who control that situation he is in. And they ask him about the intruder. So what did you see? Did you get any details about them? Is it a man? Is it a woman? What's going on? And he didn't say anything because the intruder was wearing a mask and was not showing any clear features even though straight away from the shape of the body and the way in which the intruder moved was obvious that it was a woman to me so much so that I thought it was Sid from a different timeline because to me she looked exactly like Sid, like the same movements and the same height and so on. But the main thing that Joe knew was that the intruder couldn't speak for some reason. And I mean, isn't that a relevant point? So that you should tell the right and left side that you know at least that. Wouldn't that save you in some way? Wouldn't that give you a second chance? I don't know. To me, it was obvious. You should tell them this detail. And so I'm curious what would be different in the plot if that would have happened, right? So if Joe had said that. And then if the siblings were not meant to be in the farmhouse in the first place, as explained via tape, then how would the intruder communicate with the right and left? Side because she used Joe to speak and to record the answers or the questions on the tape, right? So what was her plan? So how did she communicate in the previous times she went there? Because they knew that this intruder was coming and based on the first dialogue we get on the tape, it sounds like this is the first time that they're doing this, at least with the siblings. But now it doesn't really make sense, does it? I don't know. So I would say some pros of this movie, time travel itself, I love this trope. The first 20 minutes are awesome, as well as the pace that we get at the beginning. Then the use of clocks and a notebook to begin their trip, so to time travel, which made me even more curious about how does this work. And the last pro is that it was atmospheric 
and claustrophobic because you really feel the frustration from the characters so from their interpretation as well as from the environment they are in but there are also several cons in my opinion it indulged for too long in that time spent in the house without any development or plot points i mean i get that this made it atmospheric in the end but it could have been way shorter at least that section or we could have learned way more details about the two characters so more character development the movie didn't provide a bunch of answers the wait so the fact that it's a slow movie didn't pay off i would have been happy with a slow movie but answers at the end or some kind of explanation and that's why the ending is not satisfying at least not for me because we get barely any answer or even any world building or it felt as if towards the end joe knows that he's about to be wiped and that means that nothing really matters anymore thus the director doesn't need to give us the answers because nothing matters anymore and i watched an interview in which the director says that he prefers to leave the audience asking questions which of course is a personal preference because i hate it i mean i don't want easy answers or an easy plot i just want to be given all pieces to get some logic out of it to work my way out of the movie right and to think about it after viewing it but here i don't get any detail but i feel like you never get a proper answer in the book and i hate those <laughs> Again, I didn't really know at the time, but it is one of my personal pet peeves, especially in horror books. I feel like it's very common. I don't care what the answer is. I don't care if it's alien, if it's ghost, if it's a disease, whatever it is in the horror setting. I just want you as an author to do your job and tell me. Because there are plot points thrown out there, just like hooks, but they don't lead anywhere. And this simply drives me nuts. And the point is, I'm even more disappointed because I love sci-fi and I'm always eager for more time travel movies or new ways to interpret time travel or to envision how it could potentially work. It feels like I was promised an awesome story, but past the 20 minute mark or so, nothing interesting happens. And at the beginning, when Joe is about to open the door, it looks at least to me, maybe I misinterpreted, but it looked like he knew what he was doing as if he was a traveler, so as if he was experiencing that. And that made me think and also hope for multiple time travels, so multiple trips. And I was hoping they would use more this tool, so a different kind of clock or a different combination and switching locations and see what happens to their bodies if they move to, a, to yet another timeline or something like that. I was hoping to see more, more development, more depth. And don't get me wrong, this is a low budget movie, so they did an amazing job based on that, based on what they had and that's probably why they used one location only, just a couple of actors, but still such a disappointment. Getting to the end of this movie felt like when you're watching a Netflix show and you're hoping for a second season and maybe there is even a cliffhanger and then it gets cancelled. But instead this movie was meant to be like this, which is even worse in my opinion or it makes me feel angry so much that I had to film this video. <laughs> what are your thoughts? I want to know if you enjoyed this movie if you even heard about it, do you prefer to get answers or you're happy with wondering about what it could be potentially? Let me know in the comments. Hit the notification bell so that you won't miss any uploads because I'm planning to maybe make a couple more of these specifically about The Devil's Hour and Archive 81 which are two shows I recently watched and I have thoughts about. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one.